What I'm arguing is we just can't say, hey, the system is rotten and giving them more to do will just make it more rotten. The people that are advocates for this kind of government-run, state-run preschool system believe that this time they will get it right. I feel that they're trying to, to me, get rid of home daycare providers, trying to say, you know, uh, the, the preschool program in the school district is better, but it's not better. Universal preschool is a big mistake. There's a vigorous debate in the country right now surrounding early childhood education. One thing everyone agrees on is that our educational system is in trouble. If you look at all different kinds of measures of student achievement, what you really see is like a flat line. We're like 15th or 16th in, in the industrialized world. It's simply not good enough. In fact, we actually score worse now on things like the SAT than we did, you know, in 1971. We keep wanting to find some silver bullet. We, you know, we passed this bill or that bill. Nothing has worked. The latest silver bullet is called Universal Preschool, a plan that would make publicly funded preschool available to all four-year-olds on a voluntary basis. Oklahoma, Georgia, and Florida already have universal preschool programs in place, and the movement is gaining momentum. Bye. The push to start early has some powerful champions, including both the Democratic candidates. I've advocated universal pre-kindergarten. every dollar we invest in these programs, we get $10 back. If adopted, Barack Obama's educational plan would increase federal outlays to early education programs by $10 billion. Well, right now, universal preschool, the idea of the earlier you start with a child, the more of an advantage they will have has really taken hold of the imaginations of, you know, the people that run public education in America. There's nothing more important in terms of life performance than school readiness. To make their case, universal preschool advocates rely on studies of three model programs. These studies show that intensive early interventions in the lives of poor children can save taxpayers money over the long term by, for example, reducing dropout rates and criminality. We have got data that shows the cost-benefit. These should not be thought of as cost, but as investments in human capital. Critics argue that these studies are irrelevant to discussions of universal preschool because they're based on small, expensive programs that provided poor families with a wide range of interventions over several years. These kids got iron fortified formula, they got parent training, they got all kinds of in interventions that don't really look like the kinds of proposals we have today for universal preschool. The best evidence for the effectiveness of universal preschool programs comes from states like Oklahoma, which has had universal preschool for a decade. Oklahoma is one of just three states that offer free preschool to any family that wants it. Children who attend preschool here scored 52% higher in reading and 21% higher in math than those who didn't. Children who attend preschool in Oklahoma do score better on tests in kindergarten, but those results appear to fade out within a few years. In 1998, before they started doing universal preschool, they scored above average for all of the states in the United States. Ten years later, after they've been implementing universal preschool, they now score below the national average in fourth grade reading and math. In Oklahoma, like the rest of the country, 70% of four-year-olds attend preschool. Since there's no obvious demand and we already have programs like Head Start for Poor Children, what exactly is the argument for providing publicly funded preschool to all children? Look, Oklahoma and Georgia both had programs just for poor kids. They realized quickly to maintain these programs and allow them to grow, you have to serve uh, middle-class children as well in order to have that constituency that get legislators to say, we're for this program. Mia Levy is the owner of the Manhattan Academy, a Montessori school in Manhattan Beach, California. There's a certain segment of children whose families cannot afford preschool. If you want them to have preschool, help them. But you don't need to waste money, taxpayer, scarce dollars, on children whose families don't need that kind of assistance. We all want high quality care for our children. So how does the current competitive system stack up? There's no argument the quality of childcare in America by every measurement and every study we have indicates 
and it, it's somewhere between poor and mediocre. Well, probably the best judge of outcomes for a three-year-old is the parents, right? In recent statewide surveys, 80% of parents gave their child care providers grades of A or A+. Even though the current system doesn't appear to be broken, Universal Preschool would attempt to fix it by requiring teachers to have credentials. So right now in the United States, a lot of people in the lower economic strata serve children. And sometimes those workers are actually the sole income earners of their families. You know, they've started single women businesses. You know, there's, they've done a lot of things for their communities, but they don't necessarily have credentials, so they would be the first losers. Marcella Graves owns a home daycare and preschool in Fresno, California. Hi, Marie. Hi, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? Oh, pretty good. Hi, what gives me most joy is the children, watching them grow, learn, learn from other children, learn to give, care for each other. Mm -hmm. All right, time to go. I love my job. It gives me great pleasure. A person that wants to work with young children is really a saint, I would say, because it takes a lot of patience. Anyone that's ever spent a day with a four-year-old knows that it can be a long day. It's not about sitting them down for hours and having them learn and practice. It's about engaging them and making the day interesting. If Universal Preschool started tomorrow, it would put a lot of licensed providers out of business. I don't have time to go back to school to get my BA and work a full-time business. They're losing business. I mean, their concern is about staying in business. My concern is about the development of our nation's children. Adopting universal preschool would result in a dramatic decrease in choice for parents. Once you start a universal program, there would be universal standards. So what you're talking about is more of a homogeneous kind of an environment. Um, and you would be losing out on some of the magic that is preschool. You know, another loser would be a lot of the nonprofit groups that already serve children, like the YMCAs and the Boys and Girls Clubs and local churches and community organizations. It's very difficult to compete with free. Universal preschool critics argue that competition is the best way to make sure we have high quality preschools. Our schools are of a high, high quality. We're always reevaluating what we're doing. If we didn't, we would be closed down. Public schools, they're not doing it, they're not closed down. They get to keep going, they get, get to keep doing what they're doing. So what do you think? Is universal preschool the best way to fix our educational system? We have to ask ourselves, where will we invest our scarce resources? Will we invest them in universal preschool, where the results largely fade out by the fourth grade? Or will we consider what we need to do with K-12 to make our schools more competitive in general? It's not as sufficient for us to say K-12 to is failing. We all kind of agree that it is. We've got to fix that system. In the United States, we do have choice in education. We have choice in preschool and we have choice in college. It's just the K-12 sector where, you know, the government and individuals seem to be skeptical or have a hard time with the idea of choice and competition. Public schools are the backbone of this society. We're not going to get rid of public schools. If they're not good enough, we've got to change them. I think that the public school system should take a lesson from some of the private sector and watch how we are handling the operations of our school. What we need is more choices and more competition so that kids have the right of exit, so they can move from one program to another without being tied or obligated to stay at one school that's not working for them. For Reason TV, I'm Nick Gillespie.